Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video, what we're going to be going over is how to create a camera system which will smoothly transition from third person to first person and vice versa. So if I hit play, we can show you what we're going to make today. So as you can see, we're in game here in third person. And if I to press V, we're going to smoothly put the camera in into first person. We can run about like this, press V and we'll go back smoothly into third person and the controls work perfectly as well. Now as you can see, when I'm walking forward, there is sometimes a little bit of clipping there which you can kind of see the character's head. That is a very easy fix and I will go over multiple ways to fix that. The main reason why I've not done it now is because it also is very heavily dependent on your character as well. But again, you can see kind of like that it goes down, but there's different ways to fix it as I've said. But this is what we're going over and creating today. Without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how we've done it. So some of you may also remember this idea from a different video I did a couple of years ago which some people found difficult and couldn't work, but I've basically just improved it now, and this is now in Unreal Engine 5, and again, it's heavily improved, so this is a much, much, much better way of doing it. So let's get right into it, as I was saying. So what we'll do is we'll hit Control Space, go to our Content Browser, go to Content, Third Person, Blueprints, BP Third Person Character, or whatever character blueprint it is which you are using. And what we want to do first is we want to create an input action. So to do that, we're going to hit control space to open our content browser again, go back to third person, then input, then actions, and we're going to just select the IA jump and hit control D to duplicate it and rename this to IA toggle camera or whatever it is that makes the most sense for you. And we don't need to open that up, but we do need to go back, and open up the IMC default, and then in here, add a mapping with this new mapping being the one we just created, which is the IA toggle camera open that drop down and then we'll set a button we want so we can press this select the key value here and then press whatever input action you want which for me is going to be v we'll save that we can close it and go back into our character blueprint now we can right click and simply just search for what we create what we named it which for me was ia underscore toggle camera we'll get that here so we've got this enhanced input action and now out of started we're going to get a flip-flop we can close this up again so we only have these values. But we have a flip-flop which basically toggles between the values of A and B. So the first time we press this, we're going to come out of A. The second time, we'll come out of B. Third time, will be A again, and then B, and so on and so forth. What we want to do first is get a reference to our camera boom in here. Out of this, we're going to attach component to component without going into A. The target will be camera boom, and the parent will be mesh. Then the socket name is going to be head and the location rule, rotation rule and scale rule we want to change to keep world. So what we're doing here is I'm starting in third person. So the first time I press this, I want to go to first person. And so the first step of doing that is going to be actually taking the camera boom that isn't attached to anything at the moment other than the capture component and attaching it onto the mesh with the parent socket of head. So we have the nice head movements along with our character as well. I want to just make sure that it stays where it currently is in the world as we want to control how we move it. So I'll tidy this up a little bit like so. And then out of this, we're going to drag out and add timeline. I'm going to name this timeline change camera. And then we'll double click that to open it up straight away. In here, we can set the length to whatever it is that you want. I'm going to do one because I want it to be fairly quick. And one is also what I used at the beginning of the video as well. So if you like that, use this and this is in seconds we're then going to add a track and add a float track naming this again whatever you want i'm going to name it camera track or movement track doesn't matter too much then we'll right click on here add key to curve float with a time of zero value of zero right click again add key to curve float with a time of the length you set which for me is one and then a value of one as well i'll then deselect these and then press these buttons in the top left here to zoom to it horizontal and zoom to it vertical then I'm going to right click on our curve float keys again and change the key interpolation to auto just so we have a nice smooth interpolation between them. I'll then compile this and go back into the event graph and you can see now on this timeline we have this camera track float variable coming out here. This is how we're going to decide where the camera should be when we're moving it. So we're going to be going from third person to first person based on this track. And the way we can do that is via a lerp. So if we drag out of this camera track, we get a lerp and we just want a float. 
and then we'll hold control and drag from A into alpha as we want the camera track going into alpha because that is going between the values of A, which is third person, and B, which is first person. But what is this value actually deciding? So it's third for person and first person, but what does that mean? Because at the moment it's just a number. So what we want to do is drag in a reference to the camera boom, and out of this, we're going to set target arm length. And that is how we're moving the camera forwards and backwards. That is gonna go into update of the timeline, and the target arm length is gonna go into the return value of the lerp. Now, what do we actually want the values of A and B to be on this lerp? So obviously it's gonna be the target arm length. So if we go into our viewport, let's see what those are. So currently for the moment at third person, is what this is now, which you can see here, if we select it, is 400. So if we go to our event graph and set A to 400, that's third person. And then first person, we can decide what we want. You might just want zero, but the value I'm using is minus 15. You can customize this however you like, but that is what I'm using. So you see minus 15 like that, I'll set it back to 400 for third person. Go into my event graph and set B to minus 15. So we're now gonna be going from the values of A 400 which is third person to b minus 15 which is first person however you saw this is just going to go into the center of the player so we also want to move it up and to do that we're going to be using the target offset so we go back into the event graph drag out the camera boom again and we're going to set target offset like so connecting that into set target arm length and then the target offset we're going to do something similar so we're going to drag out the camera track and get a lerp again this time we're going to get a lerp vector instead of a lerp float with the return value going into the set target offset and then a is third person so that's just zero 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 and then b is where we want it to be for first person so if we were to select the camera boom i'll set the arm length to minus 15 and then the target offset i'll put the z at 70 and you can see we're going to get something like this now obviously you can customize this however you want again so you can change different values or change it to be higher or lower but for me i think 70 is going to be fine so let me reset these back to zero and then 400 like so to get back into third person and then B on here, I'm just gonna do 70 like so. Now, because I'm only changing one value, I could have done a, a float and then just split the structure pin, but I'm doing it like this in case you want to change anything else as well. And that is now technically gonna go as, take us from third person into first person, but we wanna obviously be able to go back to third and also the input controls aren't going to be perfect yet. So let's now do the other half. So we'll go back to the flip-flop. And what we want to do now is I'm gonna select attach component to component, control C, control V to duplicate it and copy and paste it down here, connecting that into B. Camera boom is gonna go into target once again, but now the parent is going to be the capture component. So we'll drag that in from the top left, drop it into the event graph and plug that into the parent. And the socket name will just leave as none but making sure we spell non with a capital N like so. And then again, the location rule, rotation rule, scale rule, all want to be left as keep world. So let me just tidy this up a little bit so it looks a little bit neater, and then we'll move on. Cool, so once we've done that, we're now gonna drag out of attach component to component and go into reverse of the timeline that we've already created. So this is just gonna do the opposite of what we did. So obviously third person to first person, all we want to do is the opposite so we can just simply reverse this timeline. Now this will take us from third to first and first to third. However, again, the input won't be perfect. So what we want to do now is drag out of this direction enum here and get a switch on E timeline direction. Drag that into finished. So once the timeline finishes moving us from third to first or first to third, we're then gonna see which direction it's traveling. So again, we can see if it's going from third to first or first to third. I feel like I'm saying that quite a lot. But again, it's forward or backward because we then want to change the input based on which camera perspective we're currently in. And this is actually a very simple thing as well. Out of forward, all we're gonna do is set use controller rotation your and tick it so it's true. And then backwards, we're gonna set it again, but set it to false. And that is all we need to do for it. And we'll compile and save that. And with that, that is now the code done. So when we press V or whatever button it is for you, we're gonna go from third person to first person with a nice smooth transition and fixing the input. And we press it again, we're gonna go back from first to third and we can do that forever. So let's minimize this and hit play to test it out. So we can see we've got our normal third person movements and camera controls here. 
If I press V, we have a nice smooth camera transition in, and we now have our camera controls moving perfectly like this. If I press V again, I'm going to go back to third with the cam camera controls working perfectly. So you can see this is a much nicer way to what we had a couple years ago, if you remember that video. But again, basically V is going to give a nice transition in and a nice transition out. And it's incredibly easy to customize as I've gone over and shown in this video as well. Now the final thing is obviously there's sometimes a little bit of clipping with the camera and the character mesh like so. So a few easy ways to fix that are just modifying where the camera is going to be positioned in first person, which you can do through the target arm length and this target offset here. Or what you can also do is if we go down to the switch on E timeline direction, we can get a reference to our mesh and then drag out this and do set owner no C. Plug that into forward and duplicate it, plug it into backward, and then just make sure that we're setting it to owner no C ticked on forward and not ticked on backward, which basically just hides the mesh from the player when we're in first person, which means you don't need to be finicky with where it all is. So again, if I press V now, you're gonna see that if we that if we look down, we're not gonna see the player, which you might not like, but also it still kind of works anyway with this nice first person camera. And if we go V out, you can see it again there. However, what we're gonna to want to do is make sure that we make sure the player can see it again before it finishes coming back out. So what we'll do is we'll just move this from the finished and the switch on E-Time direction and just move it to here for when we first press it coming out of the flip-flop like so. So we'll put it into A there, we'll get the mesh as the target, and then that will fix that problem for us as well. So again, there's different ways of doing it based on what you want and those are the different ways. So if we go into first person, it's gonna hide the mesh. And if we go back to third person, we can see it again, although I did it on the wrong one, sorry. It needs to be on B, not A, that's my bad. So we'll just connect this back into here, like so, and then go down there. And now this should work perfectly. Third to first, can't see the player. First to third, and we can see the player perfectly again, like so. So again, it depends on how you want to do it, but that is how. But with that, I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we've set up a nice, simple camera transition, which is nice and smooth to go from third to first person and the camera input and controls all work perfectly as well. And again, it's just nice and smooth and just a different way of going between these camera angles. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you find it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as we're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers on the channel, which would be absolutely amazing. So again, please do make sure to like and subscribe and share as well. But thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.